par là. Uh, personal references, and that is the uh, headquarters of our club. Yes. Yeah. And what is the By 1972 in British Leyland France, uh, in Argentine. It's the 120th anniversary of the Auto Mondial. Car industry. Uh, nowadays, as you know, you know, the car industry is turning into mobility. Uh, what made you want to own one? And what is it that is so me. special about your car? Ah, oui. So my name is Boris Virfeu. We are here in Place de la Concorde in Paris. We are celebrating the 120 years of uh, innovation and of Paris Motor Show. And we are here with, uh, with some friends, some collectioners, some colleagues to celebrate, of course, uh, Paris Motor Show anniversary, but also the 70th birthday of uh, the brand Land Rover. So my car is a Range Rover Classic. Uh, it was delivered in July 1972 in British Leyland France, uh, in Argenteuil, in Paris. So it, I'm the fifth uh, owner of these cars. Uh, this car has been restored uh, two years ago um, through full restoration. Uh, we put the initial delivery, the Tuscan blue color, which was iconic because it was the same color as the press launch that occurs in June 1970 in uh, Wales. Uh, so it's a fantastic car. As you know, this car is the father of the SUVs. Uh, and I love driving his, uh, his V8 engine. It's, uh, it's a pure uh, emotional uh, driving car. So I've been owning this car for the last four years. Uh, I went into a full restoration two years ago. And uh, why did I uh, would like to uh, 
takes this car, uh, owns this car, is basically uh, due to its emotional uh, that is around it, uh, around this nameplate. Uh, I like, you know, the SUV, the adventurous side uh, connected to SUV. I like the luxury, which is around Range Rover. So regarding Range Rover Classic, what is so special is, of course, um, um, his high ride and his high windows, you know. So basically, you can drive on a very luxury way, like here in a sofa. Uh, and you have a very panoramic view, you know, with the large windows of this car. And, uh, and then you have the sound of the V8. So it's quite a special experience uh, I, I always recommend. Oh, for me, the Paris Motor Show is always special, uh, whatever the years. But it's true that uh, this year it's a 120th birthday. Uh, as you know, it's always uh, the opportunity to celebrate the glories of the past. Uh, but also, as we are turning into a mobility world, you know, moving from car ownership to mobility, it's also a, a good way, you know, to remember about uh, what have been done, the glories of the automotive industry. Uh, and yeah, in, in, a, in addition, in Paris, in the most beautiful city of the world, always a good moment to spend. So my name is David Boucher. I'm a head of marketing and PR for Jaguar Land Rover in France. And we're here to celebrate a 120th anniversary of the oldest motor show in the world, the Paris Motor Show. The whole story for Jaguar Land Rover this year, the Paris Motor Show, is to talk about our iconic past with one of our most uh, gorgeous representative like the XK120 from 1950 or the Range Rover Classic from 1972 and to the very latest, latest uh, cars in our lineup showing our future and actually our present because we are one of the very first to embrace the electric journey with the Jaguar I-Pace just sitting in my back and the Range Rover plug-in hybrid. Well, the whole idea is uh, in order to celebrate 120 years, it was very easy to gather 230 cars that are from 120 years to the very latest models and to drive around in the most iconic location of Paris for one hour and uh, to have all those cars representing uh, the history of movement, the past and the future all together here in Paris, one of the most beautiful city in the world. Well, we'll be starting from this place, which is very iconic, Place de la Concorde, where you have the, the home of the Automobile Club and the FIA, of Mr. Jean Todt just sitting in our back. This place will be the starting point. We'll be um, going through all our um, uh, group of cars. We'll be heading to the Invalides, which is another very iconic location where Napoleon was buried. It's the home place for the um, electric uh, Formula E race in Paris. And then we'll be heading around um, Le, Les Champs-Elysées, which of course, uh, to make a celebration and to have 230 cars line up, going down the Champs-Elysées with the Arc de Triomphe and the backdrop, I think would be uh, fantastic images. The automobile today here in Paris is something that is still very warm and very passionate. And we can see by the crowd uh, heading up today, seeing the, the history and the future of uh, the cars and it will be the case next week at the Paris Motor Show and uh, I think Paris has a long history it's the longest uh, oldest uh, motor show in the world and uh, still very uh, high footfall of people coming around gathering so it's the best uh, um, indication that automobile is still meaning something for the population in Paris and the world. Well, Jaguar Land Rover in France uh, has seen, as everywhere else in the world, a fantastic growth in 10 years of ownership of uh, Tata. And uh, especially with the Evoque, it took a new start with the impressive and unprecedented growth. So we are at record level in the past years with Land Rover. And thanks to the recent um, revamp of the Jaguar lineup, we embrace the same story. And uh, now we have a significant uh, portion of uh, our Jaguars seeing here in the streets in Paris and around France. So we're quite happy with that. And the SUVs are really at the heart of our growth uh, in the recent years. The XJ was an iconic car, the last one designed by Sir William Lyons. It was one of the kind, the first uh, luxury sedan that uh, was built and uh, set uh, a new standard for the industry much before the S-Class was introduced. This car was beautifully proportioned and the design was so in advance on its time that 
it remained uh, for the most period uh, of this 50 years unchanged and uh, managed to find this public all around the world. And this is the sign uh, for great cars that you can uh, keep them fresh uh, without changing in them dramatically over the years. So we are very happy to have this celebration, to have this uh, rally of the eighth generation of XJ joining from the UK to Paris, coming to here. And we will have a very special car on display, the personal car of Mr. William Lyons on display, and also a special exhibition uh, with the XJ6 being uh, on the special road that uh, you will be able to see. My name is David Carslake. Uh, I'm English, but I lived in France for a long time. Uh, I'm the president of the French Jagger Drivers Club, and we are in the Place de la Concorde, one of the most prestigious uh, places in Paris. Uh, and uh, the occasion is uh, the parade and exhibition of, I think, 235 cars uh, as a preview um, of the uh, Mondial de Paris. And the parade is to honor uh, the 120 years of the Salon de l'Auto. Uh, the car is an XK150 uh, of 1959. Uh, which was made in uh, three body styles. There's the Roadster, uh, the drop head coupe and the fixed head coupe and mine is obviously a fixed head coupe. I bought it in uh, April 1969. Uh, I bought it with my very first uh, pay slips when I left Cambridge University. Um, and nobody would lend me any money. It was, uh, I couldn't afford to, to, I didn't have the cash to buy it. Uh, and nobody thought about classic cars in those days. It was just a 10-year-old uh, sports car. And I had a great deal of difficulty in getting to anybody to lend me the money, but I uh, managed to do so. Uh, and so I bought it as soon as I was uh, out, of, uh, out of university. Uh, much to the fury of my father, who said uh, I was completely mad, and uh, he took me to see, uh, by force, uh, a Simca 1000. And he said, you're going to buy that. So I said, oh, no, I'm not, Dad. I want, I want an XK150. I bought it from Duncan Hamilton, uh, who uh, won Le Mans 24-hour race in 1953 uh, at the wheel of a, uh, a C-Type. It wasn't his personal car, because after he retired, he became a car dealer. But uh, he's the person who, who sold me this car, and he's obviously a rather a special person in, in Jaguar history. The XKs were the, uh, the cars that put Jaguar on the, on the world map. Uh, in 1948, nobody knew Jaguar outside uh, a few specialists. And uh, once they'd won uh, Le Mans five times uh, during the, the 50s, and uh, at the back of the car, there's a medallion, a bit like this one, uh, which lists uh, the five Le Mans victories. So uh, that was obviously Jaguar's calling card. And basically, uh, the mechanics of this car are essentially the same as the, as the C and the D types that won Le Mans. Yeah, I also have a, uh, a 1967 uh, Jaguar uh, 3.8 saloon, S type saloon. Uh, which again has the XK engine, that one is the 3.8 litre um, and uh, that one uh, has the, uh, the independent rear suspension of, of uh, essentially the same as the E-Type and it's a, it's a very uh, nice, uh, high performance, comfortable saloon car. I've been uh, involved in the organisation of special events before uh, the last Mondial, uh, they had a, an exhibition which was devoted to uh, uh, style, uh, uh, mostly uh, fashion uh, and uh, cars, the evolution of cars. And I had to find an XK120 Roadster, uh, black, because it was going to be uh, put in front of um, Vogue photographs, black and white Vogue photographs fashion photographs of, of the 50s.
happy to meet them. Unbelievable. And then this XK 150. English, British It's very difficult to redo again, and even this is why the original program is the 76, because the 76 is not in a plastic. But it's also better. But, yeah. but uh, yeah, no, soon uh, I, need, I need to go back to the uh, in UK in, uh, in Oxford. Uh, so I drive it maximum, you know, 80, 90 kilometers maximum, but nothing more. And, you, and, you, and this is a Access everywhere.